My name is Frank Horan. I come from the village of Partry in County Mayo in the west of Ireland. An abiding memory for me of the first time I left Ireland to come to work in London was the awful journey by boat and rail. I am sure many of your readers will remember the Princess Maud battling her way across the Irish Sea to Hollyhead and the Irish Mail clattering through the 300 mile rail journey to Euston. I am talking about the 50s, when the youth of Ireland was immigrating by the thousands every week, with heavy heart, but also filled with the hope of a new dawn. I have written this poem recalling those days. The name of the poem is The Princess Maud. Built in the 30s in Dumbarton by the Denny brothers, with a gross tonnage of 2,883 tons to carry passengers and cargo, including cattle. The princess served the Larne to Stranraer and the Dunleary Hollyhead route for over 30 years. It was nearing the end of her passenger service days in 1955, but for years, cattle and passenger rode the Irish Sea together. The Princess Small. I stood outside the Iron Gate, my suitcase in my hand. The time had come for me to go and leave my native land. My mother dear, God bless her, could not hold back the tears like a million other mothers for years and years and years. I bore the train in Galway, at last I'm really on my way, seldom on a train before me God. This is a special day. Rain was lashing down as Dublin came to view. Soon it was Dunleary. The dream was coming true. The scene was wild and wintry, but we weren't overawed as we sailed for dear old England on board the Princess Maud. Darkness was falling as we rode the wintry seas, the lights of Ireland fading to become fond memories. The board was creaking, tossing, lashed by wind and rain, and the seasickness gripped us as our stomachs ached and pain. Feeling it was awful as you tried to keep your head as you rolled about that bloody boat. You wish that you were dead. Murphy in his agony belched and cried and roared. Get me absolution quick, says he, or I'm jumping overboard. But Hollyhead was beckoning at the deadly hour of three. As the Maud came into harbour and we left that dreadful sea. The Irish mail was waiting. Jeez, I've never seen a train so long. We bundled in as best we could, a tired and weary throng. The train's pervading whistle aroused us now and then as we roared through station after station after station, back to sleep again. Dawn was slowly breaking as we eagerly caught you. Rows and rows of smoking houses against a sky of black and blue. 
train was moving gently now, slowly journeys end. As we said hello to Houston, we looked around for friends. The bustle and the noise, the rushing and the strife. Jeez, this is the biggest shed I've seen in all my life. Murphy was so happy. His story must be told. Or he made it to all London, where the streets are paved with gold. Suddenly on the platform, he saw a fiber without warning. But he kicked it deftly to one side. Says he, I'll start collecting. So we scattered far and near for many destinations to try our luck and make our way like many, many generations. Some perhaps did not survive and many more did thrive. But they won't forget the Princess Maud. The year was 55.